The maximum height to width ratios used for the analysis are displayed on the following line for the materials used for both wind and seismic. The maximum height to width ratios are as per SpeedWiz requirements. If the disregard shear wall height to width limitation is activated in the design settings, dashes will be displayed in the table to indicate that the height to width ratios were not considered. To reverse this change, you have to go back in the design settings and deselect the option and rerun the design. As you will see, dashes are still displayed and indicate that the following materials were not used in the project. Whether non-wood panels are used to resist shear for wind and seismic are found here in the results. This is edited by the user in the design settings. Including certain non-wood sheathing has penalties according to the standard, such as decreasing the response modification value or requiring lower aspect ratios. For more information on this subject, refer to Tutorial 3, Design Settings. The collector forces based on either the applied loads or shear wall capacities option in the results for hold downs and drag struts is chosen from the design settings. The default setting is set to determine the hold downs and drag strut forces based on the applied loads, but in the case of extreme events where the designer would like to ensure that the hold down and drag strut forces do not fail before the wall, the designer would have to choose the option based on shear wall capacities. Check with local building officials if this is a requirement in your area. Displayed next in the design setting table is the method used to determine the shear wall relative rigidity and the method on which the shear walls are designed. Both options are chosen from the design settings in the shear wall rigidity per unit length section. The shear wall relative rigidity pertains to the rigid diaphragm distribution analysis where the load is distributed to shear lines based on the shear line stiffness. This stiffness can be approximated in several ways the most common being by capacity and by deflection derived rigidities. Depending upon the chosen method, the output and the results will differ. When the use shear wall deflection to calculate rigidity is selected, the design output will display deflection based stiffness of all segments. When manual input of relative rigidity is selected, the output results will display manual input of shear wall rigidity. When the shear walls have equal rigidity option is selected, the design output will display all shear walls have the same rigidity. Finally, when the use shear wall capacity to approximate rigidity is selected, the design output will display based on wall capacity. Once the load is distributed to the shear line, it has to be distributed to different shear wall segments within the shear line. The user can determine if this should be done equally by not selecting distribute forces to wall segments based on rigidity or based on the relative stiffness of the shear wall segments by selecting this option. When this option is selected, the output results will display based on wall rigidity per unit length. When the distribute forces based on rigidity is not activated, the output results will be same for all walls. For more information on these settings, consult the Tutorial 3 Design Setting. It is important to verify that the design settings used are reflective of the case the designer is trying to model. Otherwise, the results might not be representative of the realistic conditions to which the structure is subjected. The site information table is accessed from the go to table, project information, and site information. In the site information section, the site and building specific information relevant to the generation of wind and seismic loads is displayed. The information used for the analysis found in this section can be entered by the designer by selecting the building site icon or by going to action and building site.
The methods used to generate the loads for both wind and seismic are shown in the results and is also presented in the building site information. The wind speed used in the generation of loads presented in the results is shown in the site information tab and can be manually entered to the desired value by the user. The exposure and enclosure presented in the results can be changed in the site information tab according to building code prescriptions. The minimum wind loads for walls and roofs can also be changed by the user to a desired value in the building site information. If an escarpment was included in the wind load generation, it would be described here in the results and would be entered by the designer and building site information here. Although rare for wood structures, in the case where the building is flexible or dynamically sensitive, therefore usually tall and slender structures, it is here that the gust factor determined by the engineer from a dynamic analysis can be entered when dealing with the all heights method. Essentially, selecting this dynamic analysis allows the manual calculation of the gust factor as per ASC 7 rather than using the default value of 0 0.85 and the eccentricity requirements for flexible structures. The formulas to calculate the gust factor and the eccentricity are the following. With Shearwalls version 10, the user can now control the eccentricity and percent loading to be used with the default being 15 and 75% for case 2 loading. Furthermore, the program now generates both case 1 and case 2 loads simultaneously and uses the worst of these cases for design. For more information on how the program implements the ASC 7 provisions, the user is directed to the help files and to search for USA wind site information. The option for dynamic analysis for flexible buildings is only available when using the all heights method. When using the low rise method, the option for dynamic analysis is grayed out as structures of two stories or less do not require case two loads. Shearwalls version 10 also allows the user to adjust the constant used in the calculation of velocity pressure Q by either specifying the altitude and having the program determine the maximum or average pressure using the following ASC table. Or by simply specifying the density. These values would be found here in the results.